Understanding Climate Justice. On December the 12th, 2003, my 33rd wedding anniversary, I was at a meeting in Trinity College, Dublin, when my cell phone rang. It was my son-in-law, Robert, breathless with news. My daughter, Tessa, had just given birth to their first child, a boy. Could I come to the hospital, Robert asked, and meet my first grandchild? I grabbed my coat and stepped out into the brisk winter air. It was a 10 minute walk from Trinity College through the heart of George in Dublin to Hollow Street and the, Na the National Maternity Hospital, where 31 years earlier, I had given birth to my own first child, Tessa herself. In the hospital ward, I embraced the exhausted but elated couple. Tessa tenderly passed me a tiny bundle and watched with delight as I peered inside. Face to face with my grandson, Rory, I was flooded with a rush of adrenaline, a physical sensation unlike anything I had ever felt before. In that moment, my sense of time altered and I began to think in a time span of a hundred years. I knew instinctively that I would now view Rory's life through the prism of our planet's precarious future. I made a quick mental calculation. In 2050, when Rory would be 47, he would share the planet with more than 9 billion people. These billions would be seeking food, water and shelter on a planet already suffering the effects of our global dependency on fossil fuels. What would that world be like? Would we have pushed ourselves by then to the verge of extinction? The ab abstract data on climate change that I had skirted around for so long suddenly became deeply personal. Holding this tiny baby I instantly felt the threat that climate change could pose to him and thereby to all humanity. I would be long gone by 2050, but what could I do to help ensure that Rory and every other baby born in 2003 would inherit a world fit to live in and not one on the brink of despair?